Whether it's a company creating a new tool that improves irrigation control, or another that's using radar technology to develop insights about crops, farmers are constantly being pitched new ideas. So I've been involved in radar research for probably about two and a half decades. And one of the biggest questions that people often ask is how can we use the radar technology to assist with agriculture? It had been used with satellites, but it was too expensive, and is it possible to make it cheaper? And that's where we really learned about the potential of the technology that we had in ag to really help farmers make better de decisions in their field by providing them with these, this information that you can't see with typical cameras, which the radar could do. So current technology optical cameras that people use, there are two, limitations, two major limitations. One, it derives all the information by looking at the, the canopy. This provides a lot of useful information, and we're not saying we're going to replace that, but it's limited. You cannot see through the crop. Uh, through the crop to the ground, for example, which radar technology can do. The other problem with optical systems is that they're very dependent on the sunlight. So if you've got a, gr a great day like this, it's fine, but if you've got clouds over, you can't take measurements. You're also limited to midday to take measurements. You can't take them in, a, in the morning. And crops have an interesting life cycle that extends past noon a day right through in the evening. And there's a lot of valuable information that, that one can can get from that. Everything started with the water scarcity in Brazil in 2014. So we saw that people in Sao Paulo didn't have water to drink and then we decided to do a little research about water. We saw that 70% of the water in the world goes to the agriculture and almost 50% of that is wasted in irrigation process. So we decided to visit some farms and see how the farmers are using technology in irrigation process. And we saw a lot of not technology ways. Most of the farmers that we talked, they just go to the field, put the hand on the ground to see if you need more water and then start the irrigation process. Or they are using just weather predictions and there is some mistakes because they doesn't know the real amount of water inside of the soil. So in that moment we were at high school and we decided to create a scientific project to try to solve this, pro this problem. So our technology is measuring the soil moisture, the air temperature and the air humidity. The sensors stay fixed in the field with solar panels, so we don't need to put cables in the field, the farmer doesn't need to go to the field to see the soil moisture, and our sensor doesn't need to be calibrated for each soil type, so it's easy to install with a plug-and-play system. And the technology that we are using to measure the soil moisture is called TDR, so it's time domain reflectometry, and it's really precise, so we can see small changes in the soil moisture and with that we can control the irrigation process automatically. So the sensors in the field doesn't need to be connected with the internet. All our sensors communicate with each other with radio frequency and we have a central point that receives the information from all of those sensors and sends to the cloud. And this is the only point that needs to be connected with the internet. That could be Wi-Fi, 3G, 4G. And the farmer can see all the information from the field in a web page or mobile web where is a really simple way to see graphs, tables, and also configure the soil type and crop. According to industry statistics, 71% of new businesses go bust within 10 years. While the odds look bad for aspiring entrepreneurs, there is a growing trend to reduce that number by offering ag tech startups the support necessary to be successful. I think we need to understand that it is a high-risk space. Not all of these startups are going to be successful. Our goal is to create an environment that increases their ability to become successful. And I think the rate of acceleration that any accelerator can provide will be highly dependent on that combination. What is the entrepreneur bringing to the table? What do they want to get out of it? What are the unique contributions of that accelerator, the mentors, the um, customers that are interacting with that space to help each one succeed in their own particular way. The Iowa Agritech Accelerator capitalizes on Iowa's well-established domain of the agriculture technology industry. I think it's important to have an accelerator in the Midwest because this is where our customers are. This is where farming happens. This is where the growers are. This is where we make decisions. This is where you understand that if you walk out into a field in early July, you're gonna get your pants wet. I mean, you maybe get your shoes muddy. Uh, and in the afternoon, you may get you know, hit by a rainstorm. And you, there's just all those, just the richness of context, uh, I think 
as important as you think about bringing a tool forward that's actually usable or an insight that's actually usable. You have to be here where it, where it happens. One of the main criticisms of past ag tech innovators is that they didn't take the time to understand what problems truly plague farmers. The mentor-led accelerator not only helps a startup tap into the expertise of industry leaders, but farmers as well. Let me just say that all startups come in a different place. Some startups are, hey, I have a great idea, how do I move it to the next step and maybe tef, test proof, proof of concept? And some of them are like, hey, I have a really developed idea and I want to I want to figure out how do I scale this, right? And I think that's the beauty of the accelerators. They're trying to look for what does this startup need and then how do I pair them with that expertise across all the mentor pool that I have? Uh, Sigma Zero, they have a great idea. They're also really good at testing proof of concept and they're just trying to find out where's the value. So how do I plug in the idea and um, the things that they bring into something that actually could generate and provide value for, for a customer. I think one of the things that over the course of the few months that we were uh, mentoring back and forth with Sigma Zero was trying to understand how do they fit into that overall um, to, the, to the big picture. They have a piece of that, but they also um, tried to understand, well, how do we fit in with the field boundaries, the soil types, the weather, all of the other pieces that we need to, to actually come to a solution. And then how do you take that all that information, synthesize it, and turn it into a, to a decision point that a grower or a customer um, would actually act on. Rex has really done an incredible job of, they've created all the hardware um, and the software, the app, everything that's needed for the technology to be successful. This, this is just a very unique opportunity, but you have to start somewhere. And really uh, being able to cross the, the egg with the technology is really just an exciting piece that I can still have a little bit of that taste in my mouth from the farm um, and understand how that's being used, but then also use the expertise that we have um, from, from our business in uh, sourcing and vendor management and how to help the, the RACS team um, negotiating agreements, uh, protecting their risk by uh, terms and conditions and those types of things. So for me, it is equally critical that we develop the new business ideas for the future of farming and that we develop and strengthen the connection with the farming community. These things are not an either or, they should not be an opposition. The role of providing food, fiber, fuel to the world means that we have to connect the farming operations as they exist now, the farmers and their appreciation or eagerness to adopt new technologies. We have to recognize that that too is a journey and we have to connect all of that with large ag incumbents, new tech giants, small startups, the academic setting, any of these components that have some role to play in developing and strengthening that connection between the farmer and those technologies that are evolving, in my opinion, is gonna help us get to the big challenge of dealing with the uncertainty of farming. As the pace of change continues to accelerate, there are always going to be winners and losers across the ag tech landscape. By tapping into programs led by innovators and leaders in agriculture, startups like Rakes Technology and Sigma Zero may just beat the odds. Hi, I'm Dave Mowitz. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, hit subscribe right here if you haven't already and click that little bell right here to be notified when we post a new video and click here to see more great videos.